and the camera is on. Good morning, I'm Don and this is my machine shop. And uh, what I'm going to talk about today is the industrial tool and cutter grinder. What you need to know if you're thinking of buying one of these things. Now, I'm most familiar with the Cincinnati. We had a Kaoli at the school, but it's been a lot of years since I used one. <clears throat> and there's a lot of different sizes of the Kaoli, and they have a lot of attachments, and they are a really good machine. But I mostly know about these here, so I'm going to talk mostly on this uh, Cincinnati. Now, if you're going to buy one of these, you got to understand that this table here is on ball bearings. 44 ball bearings on these hardened tracks that are down here. And there's uh, tracks that are uh, they're hard steel. Oh, my heater's going to come on, so I'll talk loud. So, if you move this machine like it's sitting, you can damage it because the table probably weighs about 300 pounds. It's going to start bouncing on top of this. So, you either got to move the table, which remove it, which is best. It takes two guys with one of these two strong guys. And uh, you take the top off and get it down and you pull these times you lift it off. But uh, if you can't do anything, you can take some hardwood wedges and drive between these places in here and lift the table up off the bearings. And there's the problem. Uh, if you see a machine uh, for sale, um, for $140. Well, what if those table tracks are damaged? That's going to really cost you if you can get it fixed at all these days. I don't know. Best to find another machine. So, you got to find a machine that's not damaged. You know, if it's damaged, this table's going to bounce. Got to go click, 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 jump, 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 and not be smooth. So, that's important. And I was assured that this was a good machine because I bought it from a machine tool dealer and uh, checked it out and it worked. And I wasn't retired that I was in business and I'd be shocked how much I paid for this thing 30, 35 years ago. So, okay. Before you buy a machine, you better check out if it's got a work head on it. Now, if this is kind of like, it's not so much with horizontal mills like I got here that nobody wants anymore. But this is hard to find. A good standard work head. And the, this is a Cincinnati work head. Uh, it works. The bearings are good. Nobody monkeyed with it. It hasn't been taken apart. You got to understand that the they assemble these things. These have uh, Type 0 Temkins and a real heavy duty head. And those are the most precision bearings. But they grind the spindle tapers in the bearings. And if you, if you take one apart and you put it back together, it's likely not to run true. But you can, if you're clever, set up your machine and re-grind the tapers. Now, this, this head here has a brown and sharp taper, and I needed 5C. So I adapted an old used uh, 5C adapter, like for a Logan in here, and I reground, got it the best I could, OD-wise, to fit that, uh, I think it's brown and sharp number 12, 9, I don't know. And uh, got that in there, then I reground the 5C taper in the machine, and this runs true. Okay, but this head has never been taken apart and it's uh, otherwise in great shape. I, there's one on eBay, thousand bucks. And that's, that might be typical if you're looking for a good head. So, my advice, and it's kind of like the old uh, milling machines, where the vertical head attachments work more than the machine itself. So, 
If I was looking for a, a industrial tool and cutter grinder, the first thing I'd be looking for is the work head. Just keep your eye out. You know, you can find a work head for 150 bucks, but if you buy a tool and cutter grinder, it's gonna, <laughs> it, that's when it gets hard to find a work head, you know, when you need it. So that's my advice on that. And I'll show you a couple other things here. Find a good work head. Makes things much better. So, I got a horizontal mill here. I'll show you the uh, size of the cutters. So, you need a good size uh, cutter grinder. And that's what this is. This is for this type of machine and, and the other heavy machines I have here. So here's the standard work head and generally to motorize these, uh, Cincinnati had a, just a contraption and stuff and I, I just stick that motor there, that uh, light gray one on here. I think it's uh, 1125 RPM, one of them slower ones. So. That, you can motorize the work head that way. You can get a D, little DC motor, uh, variable speed if you want it. So that's how you motorize uh, the work head. Now this here is the all tool um, uh, grinding fixture, later called the Rotodex. Now this is a super precision thing here and just uh, uh, really quite expensive all tool rotodex and uh, those are just great for uh, the super precision things you know that's uh, pretty pretty cool but you use uh, a tail stock with this and you have the uh, distances and stuff like that now this is a Cincinnati number two weighs about 2,000 pounds it's, a, it's an older one, and I, I really like it. I, I have an opportunity now to get a newer one, but I like this older one to become used to it. It's sitting here and it works, and that's, that means a lot. Okay, that's my advice on this. Uh, these cutter grinders is find a work head. If you want to get into it, just kind of keep your eye out. Decide what brand you want. Uh, some some brands are kind of specific, but you can usually adapt a work head of any type to uh, any machine. Yeah, that's what the rest of your machine shop's for. Okay, I'm going to load this video. I, I'm still helping Rob at the plastic mold shop, and maybe I'll have some updates from there. That's, uh, he's just pulling out some great stuff. Okay.